Hi, uh, this is Fabian at Noisette, and today I want to talk about uh, reflashing uh, modules, uh, Go modules specifically. So um, we have out there uh, our touch display module and now uh, the DAC module, and for which we, we release updates, may they be bug fixes or new features, and um, we need to have a, uh, a, a reliable method for our customers to uh, update those modules. Um, the current method that's promoted by Secret Labs in the forums involves using a little application uh, on, loaded onto an Arduino Go board, which embeds a uh, binary version of the firmware and uh, is supposed to reflash the module, uh, the target module. Now, the only uh, problem with this application is that it has a few challenges associated with it. Um, it, it one, one of the main problem is that uh, it does not work consistently with any uh, binary version of the firmware uh, for the target board. Uh, depending on the length of uh, the file, it may or may not work. The second problem is that depending on the size of the firmware embedded in the resources loaded by this uh, application, it may or may not corrupt the firmware of the Neduino Go board itself. So when that happens, you end up with two boards, not just one, that needs to be reflashed using two different methods. So today I want to talk about uh, an alternative to reflashing modules uh, other than this application. So the method I want to describe involves uh, what's called a FTDI uh, cable or, or breakout. Effectively, this is a, a cable that has a little uh, chip embedded in it or a little breakout board like uh, this one from uh, SparkFun. Um, and uh, the, it effectively converts uh, the USB port into a serial port. Uh, they are they are fairly cheap. They are uh, you can find them anywhere between uh, five dollars and ten dollars. Um, there are cable versions uh, such as this one, uh, sold by people like uh, Adafruit or SparkFun as well, and uh, in other places that cost a little more, but uh, they're they're a little more sturdy and, and convenient potentially for some applications. Uh, for example, this one uh, plugs in uh, pin headers, uh, standard pin headers directly. So uh, that, that's you basically pay for that convenience. But effectively, they are identical to uh, this little breakout board right there. Um, I, I really like these guys because you can use them with uh, prototyping uh, wires, jumper wires, uh, whether they are male, male, or I mean, uh, uh, male, female, or um, female, female, they are, they are really convenient for working with a breadboard. And um, this is actually the method that we'll be using today. Um, these cables come generally in two flavors. Uh, they come in a 3.3 uh, volt flavor, and they come in a uh, 5 volt flavor. So be careful because the, uh, the modules that we're going to flash um, using this are only 3, three volt compatible. So don't get the 5 volt one, but be sure to get the 3.3 volt one. So um, here we are, we're about ready to reflash our module here. But uh, the problem is that uh, this is absolutely not compatible with this socket. So we need to break out uh, this particular pin header into something that plugs into, obviously, the Go connector. So um, typically, that involves um, a connector such as this one, uh, made by Proto Advantage, that breaks out the, um, the format of that um, uh, FCI connector into something uh, of a standard connector with um, uh, a standard 0.1 inch pitch, uh, like this one. Uh, so I don't have any more of uh, these at hand, so I cannot show it to you um, off of that board because that, that's soldered on it. Um, that's actually a breakout board that uh, I made, a shield that I made for connecting our touch display module to uh, an Arduino Plus. 
So uh, instead, I, I actually soldered one uh, onto a, uh, the equivalent of a smart board and uh, um, put it into a um, bread, breadboard. So um, you don't necessarily have to, to do this. You can get these guys for about $6 from uh, Proto Advantage. Um, so, you know, that, that's the method that I would recommend. So when, you know, you combine this guy and this guy plus uh, a little uh, breadboard, you wind up spending about um, $15 at the most. Uh, and you can reflash your modules at this point by yourself uh, very reliably. I, um, I highly recommend having these guys and um, breakouts for the sockets because it, it allows you to uh, um, do serial communication with your with your board or with your module or with your Go main board um, and a variety of other scenarios as you are prototyping or uh, if you want to dump terminal for your application running on the microcontroller or uh, if you just want to hack your um, your connectors and put applications together that uh, you can't when uh, you can't do when when you're using these connectors. Anyway, uh, long story short, what I did is uh, I I wired up um, this particular connector uh, according to the format of uh, the GoBus connector, and uh, uh, so effectively you've got uh, pin one over here that is powered. You've got the ground over here. Uh, you've got to transmit and receive that will correspond to each of the pins uh, on this breakout connector. So I just uh, plug it in here. Um, okay. And in the references to uh, for this video, I'll, I'll share links to all the documentation uh, to actually build this thing. But effectively, um, it just provides power and uh, uh, transmit and receive and ground and also pulls up high GPIO3 on uh, the GoBus connector because this is that part that um, uh, kicks the board into bootloader mode and makes it uh, able to receive a flash update um, serially. So it's really important. There's a little 10K resistor here. Um, it doesn't have to be 10K. It can be anywhere between, you know, um, well, very low, uh, even nothing, but uh, uh, this actually puts out 35 milliamps. Um, so if you just bridge 3.3 volts at three, uh, 35 milliamps uh, with this, it's a little pushing it uh, for the, the target board. So the best thing is to put a, a current limiting resistor. Uh, at least 1K, anywhere between 1K and, and 10K will, will work great. So um, I wanted to spend a second on the actual uh, pinout of uh, uh, those two modules. So the, this board and this board through this. So uh, one thing to remember is by convention, uh, the, the pinout is expressed from the module perspective. Consider the FTDI breakout here a module and consider uh, this board through its socket a, a module as well. So. Um, uh, you must remember not to connect transmit onto uh, transmit, but uh, cross the wires. Basically, transmit must be on receive over here, and receive must be on transmit on the other module. So it's always from the perspective of the module that the um, pinout uh, on the silk, silk screen is expressed. So as long as you remember that, um, you'll usually save yourself some, some trouble in, in the troubleshooting, uh, uh, which is, well, flip the wires and see if it works. Um, once you get used to it, it and, and you remember this convention, it's really easy, but uh, it can get a little confusing sometimes. All right, so we're ready to flash our module. We just need to uh, connect the pieces together, and uh, that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so um, the module will be connected with a shorty cable. Make sure that uh, we get the best possible um, communication. Shorty cables usually make for uh, less interference. Okay. And uh, plug this into a USB port. All right. 
So now you can see I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the board here so that you can see what's going on. But uh, there are two LEDs for trans transmit and receive on this little breakout, and uh, they're gonna be blinking as uh, uh, we reflash the board. So I'm gonna start um, uh, ST Flash Loader Demonstrator, uh, the application provided by ST Microelectronics for uh, uploading a, a flash onto one of their uh, processors. Before we can flash our uh, module, we need to download the STM32 and STM8 Flash Loader Demonstrator. Uh, this is a tool on the st.com site. Don't worry about the URL. Uh, it's long and complicated. I'll provide this at the end of the video. But go ahead and download this tool um, and install it on your machine. So I'm not going to uh, do the same thing on this video because it's already installed on my box. Uh, I don't want to go through the process of removing it to just walk you through the wizard it's pretty it's just standard um, the, it's going to I mean in, in my case I install it on uh, program files x86 uh, and if you scroll down a bit you're gonna find uh, ST microelectronics software flash loader demonstrator and the important piece here is that there is a map file that contains a list of um, uh, pro processor and microcontroller definitions um, of different types. The problem is that it's missing by default the one that you need to flash the STM32F0. So you can see it here uh, because I added it uh, sometime in um, July when I started uh, um, flashing firmware onto um, our modules. Um, but uh, you're going to need to download this file. It's just not there. So go to um, our Bitbucket uh, source repository. Uh, I'll provide the URL as well, but um, you're going to need to go to source and you're going to need to download uh, from the STM32 uh, folder, analog data module, the STM32F0 medium density 64K.ST map file. So download this file. It's just a text file, so it doesn't uh, um, it, it doesn't contain anything uh, uh, very extraordinary other than you know the means of recognizing the processor uh, and uh, through the processor ID. So save this file into that uh, map folder, and uh, you know uh, you will be able to see the the DAC uh, in in our case um, once it's there. So the other thing that you're going to need from our site. Uh, is the binary for uh, the firmware and this is called noisette DAC LV module dot bin so go ahead and download that as well and um, we're going to um, flash this and I'm going to start the um, flash loader demonstrator uh, that uh, you just installed on your box so make sure that you select the COM port that uh, is hooked up to that FTDI breakout Make sure you select the right speed, um, uh, 115.2 kilobit per second uh, is what is expected by the uh, flash loader on the chip. The parity is even, uh, echo disabled, and uh, a timeout of one is fine. Um, next, so that's, you should see this. If you place that um, um, STMAP file in the proper uh, place, the uh, flash loader will recognize that uh, the board is connected to it and um, if you click next it's going to indeed recognize the STM32F0 uh, and uh, will tell you that uh, it's all, all the pages for um, uh, the flash are unprotected so we can click next. Um, point to the folder where you downloaded the um, the firmware for the DAC and um, make sure that you select erase necessary pages. Um, you can leave all of the other options unchecked except for verify after download uh, just to be sure that um, um, the, the, the flashing process took place properly. And then once you're ready, click next. Um, it's going to erase the flash on the module and uh, it will upload the binaries um, to it one page at a time. The whole process takes about a minute 
and uh, it works um, very reliably. Okay, so we're done and um, our um, flashing operation finished uh, successfully. Thank you.